All right, it is that time. Let's take this scale and go outside and see how much we are waiting. Hello there, my friends. For the last 30 days, 30 days in January, I have been on the carnivore diet. And what you have just seen is what I have eaten. These are loin end chops, but I'll, I alternate them. One day loin end, and the next day it's gonna be rib end chops. I did, this is about a two pound pack. Additionally, I have one stick of butter, I have pepper, I have salt, and I have water. This has been my daily regimen. Two pounds of meat, a stick of butter, salt and pepper, and about five bottles of water. Is that enough? Or is it not enough to lose weight on the carnivore diet? If you have watched my channel already for a bit, you know I've been on the carnivore diet since roughly August 5th of 2023. And since then, I have lost more or less 37 pounds. But December in particular was not a good month. I've gained three pounds back and that was not what I had hoped for. I was hoping to still be on a nice downward slide as far as carnivore is concerned. Uh, so this didn't work out. So January is a big reset for me. A uh, big reset. I'm, I was analyzing at my January video what I've done wrong in December. And I've tried to eliminate all of those factors for the month of January. So what have I actually done? I've every single day eaten a pack of pork. Alternate between two different cuts, two pounds of meat. This is for 30 days, 60 pounds of meat. I've also been eating a stick of unsalted butter. That is seven and a half pounds of butter in 30 days. And for my preferred beverage, water, five pint-sized bottles a day, which is 18.75 gallons of water in 30 days. Seasonings, just salt and pepper, nothing else. So what kind of results should we be expecting? Well, I set my goal for myself. And the goal is that from that beginning of January video, when I weighed it 446.6 pounds, that I wanted to lose enough weight until July 1st to get below 299 pounds, well, below 300 pounds. So the scale needs to say 299.9 in July. This brings us to an average of roughly eight pounds a month. And the first month is up. We want to see what we have actually lost. Let's go outside real quick. So it's still cold outside, so I gotta do this quick. Take the clothing off. We are come to me. It looks like we have lost 5.6 pounds, 2.4 pounds less 
than what we had hoped for. Uh, it's a struggle. It's a, it's a constant struggle. Now, two pounds of meat per day might sound a lot to you, right? But I've only been eating one meal. Just one. Not three meals. No breakfast, lunch and dinner for me. So two pounds of food, of meat, and one stick of butter. And to be quite honest, the majority of that stick of butter was needed in order to fry that meat in the frying pan. That is not excessive. But... So, but it was enough, I guess, to lose five and a half pounds. I was hoping for more. It's always weird starting off with being behind when you set goals. It's, it's not a good thing. So what I'm going to be doing in the next months is I will be changing what I'm going to be eating. Because how can I identify what works best for me if I don't give it enough time and consistency in order to make distinctions? So, 30 days of eating pork resulted in five and a half pounds. Technically, it's the lowest weight I have been in my carnivore diet because the November weighting was, I believe, 343. So I'm doing good, right? I'm ahead. I'm actually losing weight. But I want to lose more. So what changes can I make in February to hopefully get a better result? I'm thinking of switching from pork to beef. Technically, beef is the more highly recommended meat, technically. Uh, meat, beef is also more expensive. So we're having a financial problem here, slightly, if money is tight. So the pork, for the most part, I was able to buy for six, seven dollars for the two pound package. The stick of butter, well, the butter cost eight dollars a pound, so stick of butter is two dollars. So if the pork is six and the butter is two, that's eight dollars a day for food. That's not bad if you ask me. The beef, on the other hand, is going to be co costing me probably, well, if I'm buying ground beef around here, um, $5 a pound. So it's going to be 10 plus the 2 for the butter makes it 12. So it's 8 to 12. It's $4 more. Yeah, you might say it's only $4 more, but it's 50% more on my food budget. Uh, so we'll have to we'll have to see how we how we can work that out Sometimes you get a good deal on ground beef, but that's usually a family pack and Since I don't have refrigeration. I can't keep any of that food So I I could do it, but I'm not actually saving anything Because some of that would go to waste my goal is to continue to eat somewhere between two and a two and a half pounds of meat. That's kind of like the sweet spot that I'm aiming for. Uh, and the packages that they have, they are in my supermarket. The one pound packages are actually one and a quarter pounds for the most part. They they stuff it in, right? That is that is what it looks like. Uh, so that's going to be the big change. I'm going to change from pork chops essentially to ground beef. I'm gonna keep the water and the butter. The big question everyone of course is having, did I cheat over the last 30 days? And I wouldn't call it cheating, but I've had three meals that were not desired. What were those three meals? The three meals that I had that I shouldn't have had were 
There were also days when I had no time. I did not have time to cook and just sit back and relax and enjoy myself. Uh, so in those days, I opted to buy a rotisserie chicken from the supermarket. Uh, that's one part of the equation there. And the other thing is get one of those packs of ground beef, a one pound pack, one and a quarter. Always making sure I eat the beef first and then I eat the chicken until I'm full, concentrating on the legs, the dark meat parts and the skin and all the fatty, grizzly things. Because I love fat, just not on my body. So I had three days where I was cheating, but I was still cheating carnivore. I mean, I wasn't 100% consistent with the one item I wanted to eat. But I don't think I was cheating in the sense of not doing carnivore. I don't think there's anything on there, in there, that should qualify as something that is not good. But for accountability, obviously, I want to tell you this because you are entitled to know. Right? My results are not proper if I don't disclose the things I have done. Oh wait, there's one more. Jeez, I had a fourth day of cheating. So one day in the middle of the month, I I was working, I guess I had been eating early in the day and I was super hungry. And because I was super hungry, I just couldn't help myself. So after work, four in the morning, I went to my local halal truck and uh, I waved a $20 bill in front of the guy and said to him, uh, can you give me a combo plate, but just meat? So just chicken and lamb. And he was like, yeah, sure. Now it's four o'clock, they're close to, being, close to being done for the day. Right, so it's not like they, uh, they're they giving away a ton of food here. We took the plate and completely filled it up. And he also put that white sauce on, delicious. Um, I guess I should not have had that white sauce. I think I would have been better off adding a stick of butter to it. Anyway, I ate half of that plate and then I left the other half behind uh, in my car, uh, planning on throwing it out the next day. But it was a cold night, it was below freezing. <coughs> and the next day when I got into my car, there was actually another day where I was kind of in a time crunch. I was like, hmm, I've got food right here and it's being refrigerated for all I care. Do I want to eat that or do I really want to go to a supermarket, go out of my way, spend the time, then find food? Uh, I said to myself, you know what, let's just eat the other half of it. So I had in the end, I had three, four daytime cheating meals. Three of them were chisserie chickens, one of the halal food. And I had one day late night eating, being the halal food. So that is, you know, for accountability, I've got to disclose this. And I have to be honest, there were a few days, nights rather, where I was quite hungry. Um, not happy. Not happy at all. So now the last one I had of those, the, the late night cheat meal, and I think even the rotisserie chicken, I think the last one was like uh, between a week and 10 days ago. But I had, a, I had a few nights where I was quite hungry. So I'm hoping that by switching the meat type that I'm gonna be eating in the next month, that that is gonna be different. Uh, maybe I won't be as hungry when I come home at night. Maybe a glass of water is actually going to do the trick finally. But yeah, so overall, I have been on the carnivore diet for six months now. And including the five and a half pounds I lost this month, or last month rather, I've lost 43 pounds. I don't think that's bad, right? Now, technically, we would say that weight loss should not be excessively fast. I 
I think a official recommendation is something along the lines of half a pound a week or something. And according to this, I've done roughly five point or one point four pounds. Right. So I'm quite I'm three times faster than the official recommendation. So maybe I should take that as a success. Other people have reported they lose on average 10 pounds a month. I just recently watched the guy, Carnivore Kip. Uh, he lost 27 pounds. Now he had been cheating over the holidays, like massively for like six weeks straight. So he gained like 40 pounds back. Now, when you do that, do you actually gain a full 40 pounds or not? Well, here's how it really works, right? You're not necessarily putting on the weight pound by pound in fat. The, what happens is two things, really. You do gain some weight in fat. Your body slows down with this processing. So in the beginning, there might be a little bit more of uh, uh, food being left behind, right? But the thing that's almost immediately starts happening is inflammation starts to kick in again and inflammation is actually a protective mechanism of the body inflammation and the subsequent water buildup slows you down right it protects your joints that's really the job of inflammation protecting your joints and when you when you eat a poor diet your inflammation goes up water weight gets gained so the majority of the weight that he has actually gained is water weight. That's why every single diet works in the first 30 days, right? Uh, because you're just bringing down some of your inflammation and you're shedding water weight. It's the, first, the first 30 days should never be a selling point. Because every diet is going to succeed in the first 30 days. What's more important is Two months in, that, we take that as a new normal, right? You're 60 days in. Now, now we have shed essentially almost all of our water weight, brought inflammation down to at least reasonable levels, and from here on, we are actually losing proper weight, right? That is when your weight loss slows down. That's when people also sometimes get discouraged. because they were expecting that massive amounts of loss are gonna continue throughout the journey. And I think that is why I need to be someone, somewhat grateful for the five and a half pounds that I have lost. Because to be honest, it's way more than what's recommended and it's five and a half pounds down. Look at these little boys. Don't they look delicious? So in comparison, we were both cheating. He gained 40 pounds, I gained three pounds. Uh, clearly I did a little better there. Uh, in comparison, first months of getting back on track, uh, Kip lost 27 pounds, I lost five and a half pounds. Clearly he did better there. But did he? Because he was mostly losing water weight. And it's a great first start. But he's still 13 pounds behind. While I have, while I have uh, actually lost net three additional pounds or two additional pounds. So I'm actually ahead because I'm actually back to actually losing weight and not fixing what was just broken. So I'm actually doing better. 
Now, to be fair, it all depends on the scale, right? I only cheated for a couple of days, minor things really, and Kips cheated for entire six weeks, the entire holiday season. So he's still doing tremendously good. I mean, getting rid of 27 pounds of weight, that's no small number, right? That's no small task. But it's a, for me as well, it's a complete reset. We were doing well. We were on the right track. We made a mistake and now we've restarted. And I'm quite proud of the numbers that I'm having. Now, how do other factors affect weight loss? Two factors in particular, stress and poor sleep can have a big impact on either weight loss or weight gain. And for me in particular, both of these factors play a big role. I work nights and I don't get to bed until six, seven in the morning when the sun is up. Uh, many times I only sleep for four hours, uh, then I have to go party. And then I try to get back to sleep, which is difficult because it's bright out, it's noisy out, it's um, it's uh, your, your body wants to be up, right? It's, it's it's daytime, right? There's no reason for you to be asleep at this time. So for the last eight years, ever since I started night work, this has been like a constant struggle. I've essentially developed a, or I'm essentially chronically sleep deprived. which makes weight loss harder and weight gain more likely. Stress. Stress can, can happen in many different forms. Uh, I'm self-employed, so I'm completely responsible for my own well-being financially. Also over the last years, you may have noticed from past videos, I've dug myself a financial hole. I have been going through some periods of uh, depression and anxiety, slowing me down from work, creating a lot of debt. Uh, that is a lot of stress and in order to you know become stress free you have to fix your problems right so me fixing my financial situation is a massive aspect of being healthier it will raise my mood when i no longer have this burden on my shoulders i know this because i've seen this throughout the years anytime i was broke miserable that was like my base setting, miserable. Anytime I had money, happy. Miserable, happy, miserable, happy, right? I mean, I've been doing that as a yo-yo too. Um, not happy. So not happy with where I am right now, but I'm working on it. It's, you know, once you make a mistake, it's gonna take X amount of time to get yourself out of the mistake. Uh, so you just have to deal with that. But those are, both of these factors can affect the efficiency of your weight loss program uh, that might hold you back because your body is stressed your body is perhaps in a panic mode your body does not know what's going on so your body is trying to hold on to anything it can because that is what it's supposed to do survival and that my friends is the story that is that is what's have been happening to me over the last 30 days uh, am i looking forward to the next 30 days Yes, I am. Right? We are still in winter time. It's a winter blues. Everybody is slightly depressed because of the cold and the constant overcast. And the next few days for me at least are gonna be sunny days here. Uh, temperatures are actually supposed to rise all the way into the mid fifties by the end of the week. So that is great. Uh, sunshine and warmer temperatures uh, will make you more motivated. And I have to simply combine that with being able to get to bed a little bit earlier so I can fall asleep when it's actually dark. But that also means I need to get to work earlier. And um, so I, I need to change my entire rhythm by a few hours around. That's not always an easy thing to do either. So, so yeah, what can I tell you? Uh, not on track with eight pounds, but at least five and a half pounds, 
with a true net loss of two pounds compared to my previous lowest low. So I'm actually moving in the right direction. And I think that should be uh, marked as a big positive. And, um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a straight line of loss, right? There's gonna be variations. Uh, there's never gonna be uh, just success, 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 right? Uh, our bodies change over time. Our environment changes over time. Our habits change over time. Uh, we are not that consistent. I know I am not that consistent. I'm definitely not that consistent. Now, do you need to eat just one meal a day? That is often one of those big questions, right? It was like, is that what we should be doing? Now, when you do eat one meal a day, you are definitely getting into a phase in your body um, that's related to fasting, right? Fasting apparently is good for you. And with obviously just one meal, well, you eat essentially once every 24 hours. Uh, when is, or at what interval is, is it considered that we do fasting? And I think it's about 16 hours. I would even say that fasting is essentially natural because if you have your last meal at, let's say, 8 p.m., you don't eat breakfast, but you eat lunch at noon, noon is 12 hours from mid from 8 to midnight is 4 hours that's 16 hours so we could actually by skipping just one meal the breakfast we could actually be in a fasting cycle so why am i doing one meal a day instead of two meals a day could two meals a day be more beneficial to me and the honest truth is i don't know i don't have an exact answer but i can tell you that eating just one meal a day can leave some challenges and the main challenge is that you eat that one meal in the proper proportion that you should for just one meal a day but you're still going to get hungry and then if you eat because of that the second meal then you're overeating and you're possibly eating at the wrong time again look at my schedule I eat my meal probably around between 3 and 5 p.m. Afterwards, I get myself ready, go to the gym, shower, and I go to work. Finish work at 4, get to bed at 6. I normally eat between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. That would be immediately before bed. That's, that's a bad time to eat. But that's when I'm kind of hungry, because it's been essentially 12 hours. So with my particular schedule, I have the majority of my free time before I work and almost no free time after I work this results in eating just one meal being really the best option for me because I don't really have the time in the beginning of the day to eat two meals I'll have to set have to go shopping twice I have to set everything up twice I have to move around a lot more for me it's not a good idea now if I had refrigeration maybe I could do it maybe maybe I could bring something with me to work that's easy to eat and I've done it once I brought eggs hot boiled eggs and it's kind of nice uh, because it definitely satisfies your hunger and it helps to, you to avoid the late night eating just before bed. But the problem with that is food storage inside of my car. I, I work for a living inside my car, right? I drive a taxi. So I would be limited really just eating eggs. Uh, the other problem is when it's busy, it's busy and you're not taking a break when it's busy. So if I wanted to eat something, I, would, I should probably eat it between 10 and midnight and that's kind of prime time it's just unrealistic it's like if any one of you ever worked in a restaurant you know that during the dinner rush you're not taking a break right this is just reality so with my particular schedule adding that into it is not really that easy i would almost say it's impossible 
So if you work different kind of schedule in your day and you have a different time frames of availability, eating two meals could be beneficial to you perhaps. It could perhaps help you to, to eliminate that craving, which is the time when you're most likely to cheat. So don't rule out eating two meals. I would recommend the first meal to be a smaller meal. Um, you know, if you stick to breakfast, uh, just some eggs and bacon, or maybe a sausage patty, or, or maybe a, a very skinny steak, maybe a slice of roast beef or two or three, right? Something, something small. If you can tolerate cheese, you know, that might be a good time to have a slice of cheese with your eggs. And then your second meal should be your main meal where you consume everything you actually need to consume. This also allows you to remain social and socially engaged because you don't isolate yourself from all of the meal interactions with other people. But the details on that are something that you need to figure out for yourself to see what actually works better for you. Either way, it's a, it's a question of giving it enough time and making observations and then take your conclusions based on that. This might be highly dependent on you and your particular lifestyle. So what works for you might not work for me and what works for me may not work for you. Now, would it be better for me to change my lifestyle, my daily rhythm? Absolutely. But with the industry I'm working in and uh, the lack of certain environmental uh, factors uh, makes it more difficult for me to actually make these changes. And when you try to change things in your life, you've got to pick your evil, right? Uh, I can only do so much in a day. I can only make so many changes at any given moment. Uh, te te theoretically, it's easy, right? It's like, yeah, do this, 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 and this, everything done. But the reality is we are extremely resistant to change. Yeah, you won't believe how resistant we are. We hate change. Even as young people, when we think we embrace change, it's not so much that we're actually embracing it. We are simply, we simply haven't settled in patterns yet because there's still so much to learn. But as we get older, we do settle into patterns, right? Finding new interesting things to learn about or do becomes, I don't want to say rare, but the intervals of finding them and exploring them become longer and longer, which means there's longer periods of time where we don't have disruptions to our life, which means we do start to settle into those routines. So I want to get out of my routine, but I know it's going to take time. And the two main factors of it is uh, the first one is money, all right, I've got this debt to pay, so I don't want to disrupt my workflow, my money flow. I have to make sure the money flows before anything else. And then the second part is I have some major, I have some major change planned for my life. And it's a channel for the matter. But that may not happen until the end of the year. It was actually supposed to be happening by the middle of last year. But things didn't work out the way I had planned. Which is life sometimes. But I started a YouTube channel. And I started a van life journey. And I started a carnivore diet. So there's still positives there. But all that is going to happen way later in the year. And uh, nothing to worry about for right now. So these are my results. 30 days of carnivore in January of 2024. The great reset. Uh, it wasn't that great, but at least I'm back on track. And that is, that is, uh, that's really all we can ask for, right? I'm back on track and that is where I want to remain. I no longer have any interest in cheating because I want to get the results. And a little change in what I'm actually eating uh, may re uh, cause me better results. We will see in March when I take the next measurement. I don't weight myself on a weekly basis because there's too much variation possible. If I weight myself before I go potty, I might be up two pounds. 
or if I weigh myself after going party, I might be down two pounds. So the one month interval, I think, is a, <clears throat> is a better time frame. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, the number doesn't matter that much. It's more about how you feel. Like, no, no, no. I can, I can tell you that your feelings are subjective and the numbers are objective. If you are objectively down, that is when you have lost weight. When you feel good, it means nothing. I mean, you feel good, it's great. You wanna feel good. But if weight loss is your goal, how you feel is of secondary importance. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter, but it's your main way of holding yourself accountable are numbers, right? That is weight loss down on the scale and or because we do have periods where we plateau and don't actually seem to be losing weight, uh, but we may lose in size, right? So we may lose inches, but our weight stays the same, right? Similar when you exercise, right? You may lose fat, but you gain muscle tissue, right? So your weight in the end remains the same. But because you're leaner, more muscular, you're actually smaller in size, right? Now you could say, oh, I can feel that. That's why I'm feeling good or great. Awesome. But the numbers will back up whatever you think you're feeling, right? So your feeling alone is not that good of an indicator, right? The numbers prove if you're actually on the right track. And that is what you want, because if you feel great, but you have cheated, so you're not going anywhere, then you're depriving yourself of the success of actually getting someplace. I know I want to get down below 300 pounds sometimes this year. If I feel great from today until July, that is awesome. But if I'm still rating 341 pounds in July, I will be massively pissed because that's not what I want. I want to be down below 300 pounds, right? So don't use these uh, forms of um, encouragement and feel good and, oh, it's just a number, it's this, oh, don't worry about that, right? Now, stop moving and start moving away from subjective interpretation into objective interpretation. You need to know that you're actually moving in the right direction. Having a great day is awesome. But if weight loss is your goal, and for most people who are overweight, obese, or uh, morbidly obese, just like myself, it's a number that matters 100 times more than how you actually feel on a day-by-day -day basis, right? Because if I lose 10 pounds, I am still morbidly obese. Yeah, I feel better or great but nothing has changed, right? So remove that subjective part of your interpretation. That is not how you measure if you're getting somewhere, right? The numbers of weight loss, they go up and down slightly, right? They're not consistent in their, in their measure. But you do need to make sure that on a month by month basis, you are on a downward trend in your weight. That is much more important because that is how you can define if you're actually successful. We, we have this discussion in society so much these days. Everyone is trying to redefine what success is, right? Everybody wants to put their own label and interpretation on it. And the truth is, if you just want to feel good, don't say you want, you want to be on a weight loss diet. It's not a feel good diet. It's a weight loss diet, right? Well, if weight loss diet, the whole thing is about weight, right? That is your goal. If your, your, your goal is financial independence, right? You just have to mind of, uh, define what that actually means, right? Either you want to be independent from a partner, perhaps, or you want to be more independent from a particular job that you have, or you want to set yourself up for retirement, right? Getting the big ticket items out of the way. Right? That can lead, and not, for, not getting debt, but that can lead to a sense of financial independence. But guess what? There's numbers attached to that, right? depending on you and your environment. 
So don't fall into this trap of redefining what success is. Because if you start redefining it, you will continuously redefine it simply to accommodate wherever you are at any given moment. You are removing accountability with this redefining of these words, right? You remove your own accountability. You don't have to tell the world, right? The world does not need to know anything. You need to know. Accountability to yourself, right? Honesty. If you can't be honest with yourself and you're not accountable to yourself and just base things off of feelings, then you're going to fail 100% of the time. There's no question about it. So stop redefining. Uh, take, take the world the way it is. Success in the job field is a question of where you are in your skill set compared to your competition. Success financially is how much you earn compared to your competition. How much weight loss success you have depends on how much weight you actually lose. Okay? Those are the markers. Don't mistake feelings for anything but a nice side effect. Right? Your emotions are important but your emotions are not the marker of your actual success. Because if everything is based just on emotion, then the word success no longer actually means anything because you've got a hundred people and each one of them claiming to be successful. Yet they're all in different levels. So how can I compare 100 people? Oh, you shouldn't compare 100 people. Oh, that's part of the problem, right? You are important. Yes, you are. And it's important that you hold yourself accountable to your actual true goals. And if your goal is named weight loss, then your goal is in the numbers of weight loss, not in how you feel. If you say your goal is I want to be happy, then do things that make you happy. Turns also out that often eating a poor diet leads to temporary happiness, but to long-term weight gain. And all of a sudden you're unhappy because you're waiting more, right? Clearly that's not working out. The way you feel is not your yardstick for your success, right? You have to come clean with this. There is simply no other way around it. Accountability. You have to have clear goals and a clear path. Things like weight loss are a little bit, I don't want to say arbitrary, but they're not consistent, right? It's our bodies that we're dealing with. There's life that's happening. There's a constant back and forth. And you can't 100% control how much you're actually losing. Right? I thought I was going to get eight pounds or more. I only got five and a half. But I do have control over some of the aspects surrounding it. And that is what the most important thing is here. I can control a lot of the things. And if I'm just going by how I feel that I'm happy, then I'm going to ignore those factors because I'm happy. Why would I want to pay attention to something that's not important? Right? I'm not going to put put water on a house if it's not on fire. <coughs> now, if you only need to lose five or 10 pounds, perhaps you can accept that your journey is gonna be long and very slow. And in that case, maybe you can uh, combine it with the, hey, I wanna be happy, but I still wanna see a result somehow, right? Um, but for someone who is massively obese, we just don't have that liberty. It's going to take me two years to lose the weight that I'm already having. If I'm going by just me being happy, it's going to take 50 years, right? I'll never get there. And then I'll be lying my entire life to myself, which is really what most of us do on a daily basis. We lie to ourselves. It's not society telling us X, Y, Z. Screw society. Society means nothing. You know where you're standing. You can compare yourself, right? It's a... Uh, so while we're in America, every, everybody wants to see everything just in the light of, uh, I don't know, uh, discrimination and racism and minorities and other bullshit stuff, right? 
It's like, well, compare yourself to your peers, right? You have siblings, compare yourself to your siblings. If you're not on the top, that means you haven't succeeded. It doesn't mean you can't be happy, right? If you're happy and content, then obviously you're also not complaining. Then, you know, whatever, uh, financially or weight loss, or whatever, those are not goals of yours, right? The wrong subject, right? What are goals of yours, right? It's like, if you have nothing negative in your life, then you have nothing you need to fix, right? If you're happy and content, fine, live your life the way it works because it's perfect for you. But for most people who are on a weight loss journey, um, that is not the case, right? So I'm not saying that mental health is not important. Massive, mental health is massively important. And that's why it is so important that we set realistic goals, right? Oh. Unrealistic goals leads to disappointment and frustration. So you have to set realistic goals. This is already a problem. I remember when I was young, I was doing a little calculation on how much money do I need to live on my own? And I listed all these the things that I needed and the price tag that I assumed belonged to it. And I came up with a number that was the income range of someone in their 40s and I was 20. So clearly someone in my life told me I'm delusional. And yes, I am delusional or was delusional. I guess I'm still delusional but bring it back down to what is realistic. Many times we are pricing ourselves out of our environment. You know, unrealistic goals you can't reach. In particular, you can't reach them in a reasonable time frame. So let's set realistic goals. Let's set realistic time frames. And in particular, set goals and time frames that are 95% dependent on what you, me, as individuals do. If I set goals that requires other people to do a large part, then I'm making myself subject to other people's participation in my success. And for certain aspects, entrepreneurship, that may be okay, because someone's got to do the work, but for most of our normal lives, this is not helpful. If I put my success into the hands of someone else, I'm counting on that I'm that other person's priority. Yeah, and guess what? I am my own priority, right? So don't be so generous and give your life, your future, away to other people. Control your life. Control the things in your life that you can control. And not sweat about the things that you cannot control. There's only so much you can do. right? So your goals should be based on what you can do, not on whatever other limitations or, or other people could be helping you with. That's why weight loss is one of those wonderful subjects because Everything about it is really about you. It's about how much you move and it's about how much on what kind of food you stuff in your mouth, right? I have proven that you could live on fast food, McDonald's, and still lose weight if you do it right. Not that I recommend it, but it can be done. I live in New York City. New York City is a very expensive place. Yet, food is actually one of the cheap items that we have around, even if you only earn minimum wage. I've already said, my meal on pork cost me only eight, nine dollars a day. That is not a lot of money. Minimum wage is 15, actually 16 dollars now in New York City. <clears throat> so eight, nine dollars half of an hour's earnings is not a lot of money for food. People used to work 80, 90 hours a week just to have food every day. Just food, really. Now I can produce uh, the food for a day in half an hour. I think that is a, that's a pretty sweet deal. But I could go even lower. 
the cheapest food and you can't do this with vegetables not really the cheapest food that has everything that you need would probably be chickens and eggs I can buy around here depending on the day some you know there's some places that have it always at a certain price and then other places have sales at an everyday low price I can buy chicken legs for 89 cents a pound it means if I get two let's say three pounds of chicken legs that's two dollars seventy right that's three pounds of meat I mean you take the bones out gets closer to the two pound mark which is the amount that I eat right but that's two dollar and seventy for two to three pounds of meat that is not a lot of money right and if you want to add eggs into your diet you know again depends on the season slightly uh, right now it's winter eggs are more expensive uh, but during the high season you can get eggs for a dollar fifty for a dozen right you don't need to eat the whole dozen maybe you only eat well if you eat half of them it would still be 75 cents so we're still talking about only 345 for six eggs and three pounds of meat you can do carnivore on the cheap that's for sure uh, there, there's no excuse for anyone right it's like you just have to make the changes the problem that we have many times is that we are wanting a result without making the changes that will get us the result that's one reason why we are addicted to pills I'm full anyway enough of me blubbering around um, this was my six months update it's actually been 180 days of me being on the carnivore diet I think we are still successful we are still on track and uh, it was the first 30 days of 2024 um, we're doing well and if you want to lose weight I encourage you to do what you need to do be focused on the goal and hold yourself accountable so you do not get distracted weight loss is a long game this is not a day-by-day -day play there's no intermittent success stories the end result is the only thing that matters so hold yourself accountable do your thing and uh, I encourage you you know try out carnivore it's totally worth it it's the easiest simplest dietary plan I've ever come across and it's the only one that actually works long term all that being said peace out have a great day enjoy your week if you're in New York this week you're gonna be having plenty of sunshine and warm weather maybe get out there and move a little bit take care <laughs>